One of the biggest travesties of modern education is the way it suggests that what we learn should be relevant. That it is the children and their interests that should set the agenda for the classroom. While this approach to education might make us feel warm and fuzzy inside, it is ultimately an injustice to children everywhere. Uneducated children are by definition ignorant. They have ignorant interests and ignorant tastes. To suggest that children should set the agenda for their education is akin to suggesting that they should set the agenda for their diet. Please, sir. I want some. More? What ultimately results is the consumption of garbage and a failure to cultivate taste for what is truly healthy and sustaining. In our last video, we mentioned how one of the things we most appreciate about opera is how it doesn't sink down to our level by making concessions to our age, or temperament, or monolingualism. It doesn't ask itself whether its repertoire is relevant to our immediate tastes or interests. Rather, opera simply knows that it has inherited a legacy, and that it has a duty to pass that legacy on. Well, this legacy, this duty, it's exactly what is lost in the quest to be relevant. Whenever our institutions seek to be relevant, they do so by adapting to our pre-existing tastes and interests. And the vast majority of us, we've never had the chance to cultivate or develop our tastes. And what this means is that when our institutions adapt to our level, they cut us off from anything other than that which we already know. They cut us off from a world we never knew existed and they sacrifice what makes them great in the name of relevance. And that, that ultimately is an injustice to us. How exactly is this an injustice, however? And is it not more of an injustice that I just called our collective tastes and interests uncultivated and inferior? Your drink, madam. Pardon me, man. On surface level, it may appear as such. That is, however, until we begin to examine our society with any honest modicum of scrutiny. For nearly the entirety of our societal interactions, especially transactional ones, are based on a recognition of our own inferiority. Before we consider examples of this, however, we first need to examine the word inferiority itself. At the heart of the definition, it simply means the condition of being lower in status or quality than another. That's it. It's simply an objective observation. So let's look at the practical examples. I can say with confidence that, on a level of physical strength, I'm inferior to a personal trainer. And yet, when we choose to work with a personal trainer, we do so because we know that they are stronger and more disciplined than we are. When we choose to eat out, we do so because we know the chefs at our favorite restaurant are better cooks than we are. When a business chooses to contract a marketing firm, it does so because it believes the firm's knowledge and capability is better than its own. In none of these cases do we feel insulted for being quote-unquote inferior. Rather, we gladly seek these people and opportunities out, perhaps even at an unconscious level, because their knowledge and expertise is precisely what enriches our lives and makes them better. This is why it's an injustice for our great, our great institutions to adapt to us in the name of relevance. Rather than having everything we interact with adapt to us, we should want our institutions to push us so that we learn, so that we grow, and so that we develop as individuals. We don't study under a professor so he can tell us we're already pretty smart. We don't hire a personal trainer so he can tell us we're doing just fine by ourselves. Why in the world then would we ever desire our great institutions to do just that?
whether it's in the arts, academia, faith, or fitness, we deserve better than relevance. We deserve to be pushed and grown in order to reap the benefits of ideals and values we can't yet comprehend. You know, the travesty of relevance is that while it might make you feel good in the moment, it is ultimately a poison which stunts your growth and blinds you from ever looking out over new horizons that you never knew existed. And the key to avoiding this slow death of the soul is to learn. Learn from the greats, the forgotten treasures of the past, and allow them to impart their knowledge. Allow them to pass on their legacy to you, even as you don't fully understand it. Only then will you begin to.